Hey, Campers, Raptor here with a very special virtual Bible X for you today. I certainly wish we were there in person. And if you are a returning camper that I know, I miss seeing you. If you're a new camper, I miss the chance to get to know you this year. But I hope you'll return next year and I'll have a chance to meet you in person. And for the returning people, hopefully I will see you again next year in person in 2021. So today for our Bible X, our topic is going to be talking to God which seems like a great topic in the midst of what we're going through when we're kind of isolated and feeling alone. And so it's great that we always have God there to talk to us. Um, so for our lesson today, the only things that you'll need is a piece of paper or a notebook, something to write with, and then, of course, your Bible, since it is Bible X. That would be great, and you can read along some of the passages that we're going to be going through today. So while I'm kind of introducing, you can grab those things if you need to. Again, a piece of paper or notebook, something to write with, and your Bible. That's all you'll need for our lesson today. So as we begin, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about a best friend that you have. So I'll give you a minute, see if someone's face or name pops into your head. If you have that piece of paper, you're welcome to write that person's name down. Maybe you have a couple that you think of that come to your mind right away that are your close best friends. So I want you to think about how often do you talk to that friend? Do you talk to them once a month? Do you talk to them once a week, every day? Maybe you have a daily conversation with that friend. How would you feel if that friend never talked to you? What if you tried to call them and they never picked up? Or what if you tried to FaceTime and they just ignored you? Or you sent them a letter and they never wrote back? How would you feel if that friend never communicated with you? All right, a second question as we begin today. Think about a friend or family member that's not with you right now. You know, we've done this social distancing thing and we've had some special people in our lives that we haven't been able to see. My parents are a little bit older, and I've been very careful about how often I see them or wearing a mask or being outside and staying my six feet apart. So think about some people in your life that you wish you could see that you haven't seen in quite a while. How could you communicate with that person, or how could you talk to them if you can't be there face-to-face? -face? Some of you might be thinking, some of the things I said already, you might pick up the telephone, give them a call. You might FaceTime, you might Skype them, you might have a Facebook conversation with them. Lots of different ways you might be able to try to communicate with that person. And how many times would you do that for someone that wasn't with you every day? Again, is that once a week, every day, once a month is enough for you? Think about how often you would like to communicate with that person who's not with you. So as we think about those friendships and communication, I want to ask this question. I'm going to read three choices, and I want you to think about which would be the best answer to this question. The question is, which action would make the best friendship? Which action would make the best friendship? And I'm going to give you three choices, and I want you to think about which one would make the best friendship. Choice A, I let my friend do all the talking, so I understand my friend better. Choice B, we each talk some and listen some. Or choice C, I do all the talking so my friend will understand me better. So again, choice A, I let my friend do all the talking so I will understand them. Choice B, we each do some talking and some listening. Or choice C, I do all the talking so my friend will understand me better. Which of those answers do you think would be best for a friendship? Well, if you said answer B, I would agree with you. I think a friendship works best if both people do some talking and some listening. And that way we both understand each other, we both have a chance to be heard, and we are communicating back and forth. God wants to be our very best friend. And he wants that kind of friendship where we're talking back and forth. He talks to us through the Bible, he communicates his word, and through the Holy Spirit. That kind of little voice inside you when you're doing something that says, hey, this is a, not a good idea or this is an okay idea. I think I should keep going. But he doesn't want to do all the talking. He wants to hear from us. And so how can we talk to God? Maybe you said praying. And if you did, you're on the right track. 
Prayer is how we can communicate with God. And that is a way we can keep that friendship going both ways. We talk to God and he can talk back to us. So here's a story to show how Jesus told his followers how much God wants to hear from us. Okay, So I'm going to read from Luke 11, verses 5 to 8 to start again. This is Luke in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and chapter 11, starting in verse 5, verses 5 to 8. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So one thing to think about, during the time that this was written, it would be very common for families to all be sleeping together in an open room on the floor. So if this man was to get up, and go get some bread, he would pretty much disturb his entire family. Everybody would be woken up at midnight. Most of you probably would have been in bed for a couple hours at midnight. So everybody would have been woken up. Maybe they were young kids. They're going to be crying before they go back to sleep. It would have been quite the adventure to help this man out. And so I want you to think about how that man would feel getting that bread, waking up his whole family. He might be a little bit grumpy. He's going to be mad at his kids who are crying and making noise. He might even step on somebody if it was dark and he's trying to get over to get that bread. So it was a big deal. And those are some reasons that the man probably wouldn't want to give his friend the bread. Why would he do it anyway, though, with all this going on? Why would he still give him the bread? He did it not because they were friends. He did it because his friend would not go away. So the friend is probably still knocking on the door, ringing that doorbell. Hey, I need that bread anytime now. Just let me know when you're going to bring that bread out. He was persistent. And so the man inside the house got the bread just to get rid of him. Jesus wants us to understand that God is different from man in many important ways. So here's what Jesus goes on to say. So now I'm still in Luke 11, and now starting in verse 9 through verses 13. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, I'm a father. My kids attended camp as well many years. And so I've always enjoyed this verse. It really struck me because I think parents generally want to do the best for their kids. And I kind I find this verse kind of funny when you think about it you know this first part suppose your son asks for a fish now you might not know what to do with just a fish right out of the lake or the ocean okay but maybe your fish is a mcdonald's fish fillet i like those or maybe your fish is some swedish fish so you can think about it in any of those terms but if you asked for that fish what kind of a father would give a snake, that would not be a good gift. When you're expecting something perhaps sweet and delicious, and instead, ah, a snake comes at you. No father would do that. So I find that kind of funny to think about. Or perhaps in the second part of it, you wanted an egg. There are a lot of things to do with an egg. You can have scrambled eggs. You can make an omelet an egg McMuffin, which is delicious, egg foo young, if you enjoy Chinese food, many different things to do with an egg. So if you asked for an egg, what would you do with 
a scorpion. Now, I could not find a scorpion, but this is pretty close. When you ask for an egg and put your hand out, would you want <laughs> a spider, a giant tarantula in your hand, when you just wanted an egg to make some breakfast? No father would do that. So I find that just a very funny example to think about the difference between God and man. So that's the big difference between God and man. People do things wrong in the verse that says, you who are evil. So we do things wrong as human beings, but God is completely good. Think about when you've asked your parent for something and you've gotten what you asked for. Can you think of maybe a favorite present that you got from a parent for a birthday, for Christmas? Maybe some of you recently had a graduation from kindergarten, from fifth grade, from different grade. Moving on. I can think about many gifts over the years that were very fun, very special. I'm a big Ravens fan, and I remember one year my wife gave me my first Ravens jersey, a player named Ed Reed, and I was so excited to support my team. I think about last Father's Day when I really wanted a kayak, and I got a kayak, and I've been able to go out on the rivers and relax and enjoy some time on the water. That's been very fun. So maybe you can think about a fun gift that you asked for that you got. Or maybe they just surprised you with something because they knew you so well, you didn't even have to ask. So if we are very imperfect human beings and we can still figure out how to give good at, good gifts, we can figure out that people will put a Swedish fish instead of a snake. How much more is God willing to give us good gifts? So the man in the story didn't want to help his friend only to just get rid of him in the middle of the night. God wants to help us because he loves us. He always wants to hear from us, and he's happy to hear from us. Okay? As we said, God wants to hear through us through prayer. And so the promise we have from God is if we pray, guess what? He's going to answer us. Does that mean we'll always get what we ask for? Probably not. But if we pray... There's three possibilities. God may say to us, yes, I will give that to you. God might, be, might say, no, I don't think that's the best thing for you. I'm not going to answer that prayer the way you want. Or the third thing, third thing God might say, he might say, wait, just wait. Right now, it's not the time for that. And a decision may come later. And that's a hard one for us. We live in a very instant world instant communication with the technology we have, microwaves, heat up your Pop-Tart in three seconds. We want everything right away, so it's hard for us to wait. But sometimes God says, just wait. What can we talk to God about? I hope that you said anything and everything. That's what God wants to hear from us from about. So a challenge for you today, as we begin to wrap up, Take that notebook or piece of paper, and I want you to start a page at the top, and I want you to write, Dear God. Very simple beginning. Dear God. And I want you to think about some things you could pray about today. One thing you can do is think about what is concerning you, what's on your mind to talk to God about. Maybe you got the word that school is going to be virtual in the fall. I'm a teacher myself. I just found out that my school will be virtual. It's very difficult. I've had to talk to God a lot about that. So maybe that's a lot of stress for you, figuring out how to do remote learning, how to be online for several hours a day, hours a day without your teachers, without your friends. Talk to God about that. Speaking of your friends, maybe you're wondering how you can connect with your friends. I miss seeing them every day at school. And I don't know if I'll have a chance to catch up with them. So maybe that's concerning you. Maybe you had a lot of special events canceled or going to be canceled. Maybe you were supposed to graduate from elementary school and middle school. Maybe you were moving up a grade and you wanted a celebration that didn't happen. Maybe some concerts you were in or sporting events, tournaments got canceled. And you're upset about that. You can talk to God about all those things. 
The second thing you can do is think about things you are thankful for, things we can praise God about. Maybe despite all this COVID action, you've been very healthy. Your whole family's been healthy. Thank God that you've been able to be spared and been healthy through this. Thank God for technology. The wonderful ways we can stay in touch with our friends, all those ways we talked about. We're very lucky that we have this time we can still stay in contact. And I know you might be computered out, Zoomed out for us adults who have a lot of the Zoom meetings. But we should be thankful we can stay in touch with people and connect through technology. So you think about ways that you can thank God for things that are going well. And then lastly, think about others. Think about other people in your life, in the world that you can pray for, that you can lift up. Not everyone has the same technology as us. Not everybody has the same blessings as we do in our nation. So think about others in our country and other countries and around the world that we can pray for and lift up. Some might not know God at all. We can pray for those people that they are able to connect and find God. So I want you to, when we wrap up here, if you haven't done it already, finish that letter. Maybe three things that are on your mind you want to pray about. Three things that you are thankful for, and maybe three things you can lift up other people. Maybe it's people that you do know, but they're far from God, or they're having troubles. You can pray for them. So that's just nine things. Three things that you're concerned about, three things you're thankful for, and three other people that you can think about and pray for. So when you finish that letter, put it in a special place, if it's in your Bible, in your bedroom, a place where you know where it is. If you have a bulletin board, you can stick it right up there. And what I encourage you to do is in a week, two weeks, maybe at the beginning of the next month, take that letter out. Look at those prayer requests that you had and think about each one. And what was the answer? Was it yes, God took care of it? Was it a no, God did not grant that prayer request at this time? Or was it a wait? Maybe you haven't really felt like there's been an answer to that. And then it might be time to update your list. Maybe some prayers got answered. Maybe you prayed for a sick friend and they're better. You can cross that off and add somebody else or another situation to pray for. That list should change over time. That way we know that we are in communication with God. If it's the same thing and we never change it, we're probably not listening and we're too busy talking. And like that friendship, it needs to be back and forth. So we might need to listen and make sure we're seeing the answers. All right, campers, I leave you with this today, a memory verse for you to work on, Philippians 4, 6, and it also relates to praying. And it goes like this, and I encourage you to write this down from your Bible and try to memorize this. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. One more time, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything. That really applies to what we're going through now. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. God wants to hear from us. He's asking us to come to him with our concerns with our celebrations, with our fears, with our struggles. And he will give us an answer through prayer. So boys and girls, I hope that you have luck in memorizing Philippians 4, 6. I hope that you are encouraged to talk to God daily. And I hope that you're encouraged by this list and you'll take those to God. That list will change and develop and, and evolve and, and grow. And you'll get more comfortable talking to God. Again, campers, thanks for tuning in to this virtual Bible X. Again, I'm so sorry that we are not here in person. I really look forward to seeing all of you very soon, hopefully another year when we can gather together. Again, I am Raptor. I am so blessed to have some time with you, and I will close us out with prayer. God, we just thank you today that we can bring our prayers to you, that we can have a friendship where we can talk to you, we can listen and hear from you. Nothing is too small or too big to bring to you, Father God. 
And we thank you that you're a God who is a friend, a God who listens, a God who helps. I pray for all these campers, the ones who tuned in, the ones who were not able to, Lord. I just pray you'll lift them up, you'll protect them. I pray for school, for all these campers. I just pray it goes smoothly. You'll help encourage them, help them to make it through these tough times. I pray for anyone who is sick or has a sick family member. We pray for your great healing for them. And God, though we're not together, we know that we're always connected through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Campers, have a great day. God bless. We will see you soon. Bye.